Now, by way of therapy and treatment of those people suffering from PTSD and other related problems, there are a number of treatments. And I agree with most of them and disagree with some. However, the only one that's not controversial is the one you're dealing with. There is no controversy over the benefit of service dogs or horses. The animal, a human bond. That's the good news. You don't have to prove your product to sell it. People naturally recognize, as we can right here today, the benefit of them. So I, I commend you for your work. I commend Joanne for her initiative, which has brought you all together. This the second time. And I think it has tremendous potential, and our objective has to be to establish consensual, agreed-to standards that can help the industry by precluding those people that would take advantage of a situation to, to profit from it. But the benefit to the soldiers and their families is indisputable. Thank you for being here, and thank you very much. Um. Why am I so passionate about service dogs? Um, untreated PTSD leads to addictions, homelessness, suicide, and uh, I'm one of the lucky ones. I get a second chance. Uh, my girl, Ty, uh, has made such a dramatic change in my life that uh, it's almost hard to imagine life without her now. Well, let's put it this way. I had two strokes, my brain is damaged. Before I had Kenya, I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't take any sleeping medication because of my brain illness. And my, my speech impairment was bad. Uh, my hearing, uh, understanding speech was really, asthma was really bad, asthma. And now I sleep at night because as soon as I got a nightmare, she licked my hand, wake me up. And if I got a flashback, she licked my face. Uh, she's doing all the stuff to make my life a better life. Uh, before I had my service dog, my, uh, I felt broken. I was a mess. You know, I was uh, a functional mess. I was still getting on with my life, but uh, not in a healthy way. Uh, the biggest part that I've seen is that there's hope. And that, that's been the big part for me. Uh, and the, the way that she's been able to respond to my, my symptoms uh, with my hypervigilance, if my anxiety gets overwhelming uh, and I have to own or get myself in a corner, she comes and she leans up against me and makes me feel safe. So she offers me hope, she offers me that feeling of safety, and uh, she also offers me that, that sense of control. Everybody's different, and so to try and have some sort of common treatment, uh, that's impossible except for the animals, except for the dogs. That, that therapy, nobody complains about it. And every person that has one uh, benefits and is very outspoken about the benefits. Well, there, there's, that's, there's life-saving, you know what I mean? Like you understand, I've seen instances where uh, individuals have uh, built bunkers in their basement and uh, sandbagged themselves in there. And they've been living in their house or their basement for a year or two years or They've been on 33 types of medications, tried to kill themselves, been separated, been homeless. Um, all the most negative effects you can think of that can happen to a person I've, I've seen on, in a veteran that served our country. The, uh, if there's one number that's a takeaway, it's zero. And zero is the number of veterans with PTSD that get paired with a service dog that go on to hurt themselves. The goal here, I believe, is to, to start developing a national standard uh, for, for what defines a service dog team uh, and, and specifically for our military members. You know, now that our, our numbers overseas are dwindling, uh, there's going to be a lot of people coming home that are going to be hurt and, and suffering in the same way. And, you know, we have to have something in place for when they come home. And if this is a tool that, that will help them or an aid that will help them, that's needed and that, that needs to be recognized at a, at a federal level. Standards are the most important thing because you will never have military buy-in without standards. The military is not going to, 
That's why the military works with us. They're not going to have some loosey-goosey operation that trains to this or maybe to that. Well, standards are absolutely critical to the success because what will happen without standards in any situation like this where there's potentially money to be made by the unscrupulous, that 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 will happen and there will be people who are taken advantage of both the animal and the individuals uh, by some who are not qualified and I mean really woefully qualified uh, to produce the product which is your partner your dog what we're dealing with here are you know right now are standards in training and that includes the uh, requirements um, you know uh, for a person to work with the service dog in the first place. It was really a no-brainer that I would uh, be happy to loan my name and, and some time and effort to, uh, to having Joanne reach her objective, which is to have a common standard so we can trust the people that are providing the animals for therapy. So, for example, even when it comes to fostering a dog for a year, before it even goes into any kind of training. And it just what kind of an impact would we, would we make, what the summit would make? And the impact there was that we managed to get consensus, which is a big thing, uh, to essentially look at where we can go from here with respect to the certification of military assistance dog teams as well as developing standards for military assistance dog teams. And so now we are going to make some further inquiries. We, there's a federal government agency that we can talk to more about that. We've already started those discussions about how we can potentially work together to address standards and to address certification, third-party certification.